Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back again. Somebody asked me a question. This question keeps coming every year. What happens when there is a dual retrogression of Jupiter and Saturn? Well, dual retrogression, what does this mean? It means both the planets are retrograde at the same time. So now, at this time, What's the date? It's 13 September 2023. Today, both Jupiter and Saturn are retrograde. So what does this mean? Uh, what does this mean uh, uh, at, at the astronomical level or you know, what does it mean at an astrological level, at an intellectual level? So that, that's exactly what we are going to discuss, right? And as usual, if you are new to the channel, if you have not watched my other videos on Saturn or Jupiter, you will uh, you can go and search Exotic Astrology Saturn, Exotic Astrology Jupiter. You will find a lot of videos. You can watch them to get more understanding on this topic. And you can also uh, see the retrograde videos, okay, uh, which I made in the last month, uh, in the last 20, 30 days. That will give you more idea on what exactly is going on. And uh, if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up at the end. Uh, and if you want a consultation from me regarding your career, marriage, health, relationships, you can always go to my website down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him, especially during such retrograde moments. All right. So you have to understand what is Jupiter and Saturn? So Jupiter is actually the original ninth lord. So in the Kalpurush Kundli, Jupiter rules Sagittarius. And Saturn is the tenth lord in the Kalpurush Kundli because he rules Capricorn, which is sign number 10. Now we know that Parashar Muni says whenever the lord of the ninth and the tenth undergo some kind of a yoga, then that is called as Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga, which is the topmost of all yogas. Okay, because Dharma Dharma is ninth house, Karma is tenth house. Dharma Karma Adipati is the ruler of the house of these two houses. So ninth lord, tenth lord. If they are together, sitting together somewhere, if they are exchanging each other's places, parivartan or they are mutually aspecting each other or one of them is aspecting uh, and the other one is not. Even then that's some kind of a yoga. There is some kind of, if there is some kind of a yoga that the ninth and 10th lords are involved with, then uh, you know that uh, this is the best yoga to have in a horoscope. Now, uh, what does this yoga mean? What does this yoga do? So whenever people hear the word dharma karma, they... They, they interpret it very loosely. So they try to uh, say, oh, dharma is religion and karma is career. Okay, so that means will a person have a religious career? Will the person become a monk or a, a malvi or a pastor or father or whatever, somebody, you know, rabbi or somebody like that? So does it mean the person will leave uh, all the material things and uh, go, go to renunciation? No, that is... That is not how you read Dharma Karma Adipat Yoga because it is uh, Dharma and religion and Karma and career are very different. Okay, These are like uh, loose uh, terms which are used in English people, especially by the West, Westerners, uh, to, to get some idea of what is Dharma you know, and to get some idea of what is Karma. But if I talk of karma, then every second we are doing a karma. This video I am making, I am doing a karma, right? You are hearing, hopefully, till now. <laughs> so you are doing a karma. And hopefully somebody else will hear. So then they will do their karma, right? So tomorrow I may make another video. That That's my new karma, right? So, so this, any work that you do. Now, why do they say that 10th house shows your karmas? Not because it's the house of your profession or job, you know, that is merely 6%, uh, 6 hours of your day, ideally as per Vedic uh, standards. It should not be more than 6 hours because Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha is divided into 4 parts. So 24 by 4 is 6. <clears throat> yeah, but the thing is, uh, why do they say that 10th house is the house of Karma? Because uh, the profession involves a large part of our day. 
Okay, but that is not only our karma because there are many people who have a different purpose in life and profession is just a part of their day-to-day uh, -day life, day-to-day -day routines. Okay, so that is that that in that case, uh, you 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 may have prof a profession which may just you know give you some money on the side and you you are okay with it. Now uh, that helps you to sustain yourself. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Uh, but on the other side, you you are doing other things. You know, in the weekends, from from five p.m. to nine p.m., you you are doing other things. You know, you are doing other things in the morning, and also. So that that is that is like a broad uh, perspective of karma. You know, what is like your objective of life, and uh, what is what what is like uh, the goal of your life. You know, it, it's like saying that. Now, on the other hand, what is dharma? Dharma is loosely translated as religion, as I said, but it is actually not religion. It is religion and much more than that. <clears throat> uh, dharma is basically staying true to yourself, okay, and uh, true to others also. There are different uh, things which come under dharma, like, you know, religion is there, then morality, then, uh, yeah, the ethics and all these things come. So, one of the most important principles is that you do not violate somebody else's uh, freedom or somebody else's dharma you know so that then you go into adharma like we have the example of ravana in the uh, ramayana who abducted devi sita who was uh, who is actually the eternal spouse of lord sri ramachandra who is non different from lord vishnu himself so by abducting her he had uh, violated uh, sita devi's uh, right to stay with the husband and also he had violated lord ram's right to stay with his wife so that is why ravana was very religious superficially you know he was like people think he was doing this he was doing that you know he wrote he wrote a lot of you know like uh, poems on this uh, lord shiva especially you know the shiva tandav stotram and all this so he was indeed superficially religious, but he was the one of the biggest crooks who ever lived in this world because he was perpetually adharmic. Okay, because uh, he he used religion as a way to get some power. You know, just like nowadays people use AI. Uh, so those days the demons they they were like you know devotees of Shiva or devotees of Brahma sometimes. And you know, like Hiranyakashipu was devotee of Brahma nowadays. People have kicked out Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, Jesus, uh, Allah, everybody. Nowadays, they are just devotees of uh, sex and AI, right? <laughs> Chat GPT is the new god, you know. He will fulfill our desires. Write me a post, you know. I want to do this, do that, you know. And if you want quick pleasure, then there's always sex life, right? We can uh, see uh, adult material in the internet. We can be happy, so... Or if you need money, AI will tell us, right? To be sarcastic enough, you know, right? Trying to make money just by using chat GPT. That somehow doesn't work. <laughs> no, everybody has tried it, right? So every time and age, you know, there are different um, ways by which demons, demoniac people, they try to fulfill their desires. So uh, in the Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga, Satya Yuga, they would do penance and they would uh, please these deva devatas to gain some power. And then they would wreck mayhem in the society, you know, abduct other women, insult other men, you know, like what not. The list is very long. <clears throat> so that is an example of adharma, even though you may be superficially religious, you know, you may write this stotram, that stotram, but it is it is all a bloody waste of time. Okay. So on the other hand, we have the example of Hanumanji, right? Who was also religious, uh, but he was extremely dharmic and he was a great devotee. He was a great Ram Bhakt, right? He, every breath that he would take, every drop of water, food, air that he would consume was only to serve Lord Ram, right? He would always take Ram Nam, right? So he was greatly devoted to the Supreme Lord, Lord Sri Ramachandra, and therefore he reached the pinnacle of dharma when, you know, he got the chance to help Lord Ram in so many ways, you know, by bringing the Drongiri Parvat and by um, so many, finding Sita Devi, you know, burning Lanka, like so many, I mean, you can keep going on and on with stories of Hanumanji. So, right, so bo both Hanuman and uh, Ravan, both were religious, superficially Ravana also, <clears throat> or even sometimes superficially more than Hanuman, you'll find, oh, maybe Ravana is more religious, right? He's more of a devotee of somebody 
but then what happened uh, what, what did he use all this knowledge and all this power to to abduct somebody's wife wow what a what a royal fall down right <laughs> so we have these examples so you see hanuman he was like uh, he perfect he was the perfect example of dharma right and he was serving mariyada purushottam bhagwan ram and lord ram is the pinnacle of He's the pinnacle of all Mariyada and Dharma. You know, he's Mariyada Purushottam himself. <coughs> Similar uh, is uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj in the Mahabharata we see. You know, he's like Dharmaraj Yudhishthir. Right? So, the thing is, uh, when a person has uh, Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga, then it can mean that the person uh, is really true to himself or herself. You know, what he or she is good at what he or she should do and then the person also does karma right you know, very strictly strongly with discipline the person implements that and then lead that leads to a a great change in society so that is why parashara says dharma karma dipati yoga is the strongest yoga you know not because it is a religious uh, it's a combination of uh, having a religious career you know that is not what it means okay so now, uh, coming back to this transit, you know, this transit, when these two planets are retrograde, then this means, you know, we, uh, it's like saying the Lord of Dharma and the Lord of Karma, they are retrograde, okay? So, re retrograde planet is very powerful, you know, it's much more powerful than a normal planet, which means it forces us to think, okay? That is the meaning of power. Power doesn't mean it makes you a millionaire, you know, whenever I say the word powerful, uh, people are always writing the comments. Oh, you said, you know, retrograde planets are powerful, but I have five retrograde planets. Why am I not a millionaire? Why am I begging around money, right? So uh, having one or 10 retrograde planets, <laughs> even if you have sun and moon retrograde with Rahu, Ketu and all the planets, you know, uh, sarcastically, because you can't have sun and moon, they're all retrograde because the, these two planets are always direct. <clears throat> Even if you have all the nine planets retrograde, it does not mean that you'll become a millionaire. Neither does it mean you become a beggar. It depends on the chart. You know, it, it, it's a comprehensive analysis. But <clears throat> a retrograde planet is very powerful because it is very, uh, it makes you think. It makes you uh, introspect and try to analyze your decisions in the past. So therefore, whenever uh, these two planets are retrograde, especially Jupiter and Saturn, because astronomically they are the they're, they're very large, you know, it's like the largest planets. <clears throat> uh, and uh, of course, uh, in modern uh, like astronomy, they take si uh, sun as a as a star, of course, but in Vedic astrology, we consider sun as a planet. <laughs> so in that context, I said, you know, they are like very large. <clears throat> but now as modern science goes, they are discovering bigger and bigger planet. But in the purview of this nine solar system, if you take you know nine or ten planets as the way, uh, as the modern sciences, you know, uh, keeping aside Pluto in question mark, then Jupiter and Saturn they are really like the massive bodies. You know, it's like huge. So they show they actually show huge involvement in our lives. Okay, uh, it is like a huge uh, amount of our time is consumed by them because if you see they have a lot of karakatwas right in astrology jupiter is the karak for the second fifth ninth um, even 10th and 11th right 10th not directly but yeah to some extent then shani is the karak for uh, which house is yes sixth house he's the karaka for the fourth house he shows land and all this you know sixth house diseases enemy uh, no, not enemy sorry you know problems obstacles then he's also the karaka for the tenth house you know very 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 important house you know so so when these planets are retrograde, uh, it gives us an opportunity to think and uh, go back to our decisions you know and see if we uh, to see the things that we did if it was the best or not you know because no decision is ever the best uh, maybe we can always improve our decisions right so therefore if you have these two planets retrograde uh, in your bar chart you know, then maybe you are more introspective and if you have them in transit then it means you should be true to yourself so if something has happened, you know, you lost a job or, you know, there was a divorce or something or you know, some some relationship ended for you. Uh, during these retrogressions of Jupiter and Saturn, you know, 
then it especially could mean that uh, that was something which was not uh, you you were not true to yourself you know so maybe you were doing a job where you knew deep down inside that i am not qualified for this position or i am i should not stay in this domain this is not my cup of tea you know some something like that you know <clears throat> so when you do this then what happens is you actually realize that uh, you have a potential but in another place you know in a different place so therefore uh, do not uh, don't feel bad if something negative happens you know when jupiter and saturn are retrograde because uh, they actually show you the mirror okay so jupiter saturn dual retrogression is actually a display of the mirror so you see the mirror and you realize oh what is this you know so this is who i am this is not who i was you know or this is not this is not who i thought that i was you know maybe i i should be somebody else okay so intelligence means to figure out that which you think you know you are uh, yeah try to find yourself you know try to find your passion try to see how you can earn money try to see how you can be a good partner to somebody so try to maintain a good health you know try to improve your life overall gradually you know all the parameters of your life reasonably stable okay it may not be very stable but reasonably stable try to aim for that and then uh, you will see when these planets um, they become direct you will uh, be very clear and you will be much more happy to um, accept certain things in life because now you know oh yeah really you know it's like now i am able to do that which i should have done much 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 way before okay that will be all from my side thank you very much for your patience and if you like this video hit the thumbs up and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to the channel and if you want a consultation my website is always down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him